do the review video for chapter one. Now in this review video, we're just going to go over the basics and some of the highlights of the scientific method, the characteristics of life, and the levels of organization. It is by no means everything that's going to be on the test. Those are on the previous videos and they're also in your notes, but I'm just going to hit some of the highlights, kind of help you remind you what some of the important stuff is. Make sure you study your entire notes because that'll really help you on your celebration of knowledge. All right. So let's start off with the scientific method. Remember the way to remember the scientific method? O.C. the funny carp. O.C. the funny carp. That'll help you remember the steps. Now remember, the O stands for observation of phenomena. Remember, phenomena is just the stuff that happens. C, creating a question. Remember, every uh, good scientist is very curious. They're like, huh, oh, well, why did that happen? Okay. So once you come up with a question, then you need to come up with a possible answer. And a possible answer is called a hypothesis. So the F is forming a hypothesis. And remember, hypothesis, that's written as an if. Whoops. An if then, and if you want to add the because, that's fine too. So an if then statement. If this happens, then that will happen. Okay, now to find out if your hypothesis is uh, correct or not, you're going to run a controlled experiment. So that's the C in CARP. When you do a controlled experiment, you're going to create data. So the A is going to be analyze that data, and you're going to make a conclusion to see if your hypothesis is correct or not. Uh, the R is going to be repeat, because you want to make sure that your results and your data is consistent. And then finally, peer review, where you let other scientists double check your work. Okay? So remember, OC, the funny carp. That's a great way to remember the steps of the scientific method. All right, now a couple of highlights from the scientific method. Okay, remember, in a controlled experiment, you're going to have two groups. And these two groups are, and actually, let me rephrase this, okay? One of the great ways to remember the two groups in a controlled experiment is just look at the word controlled experiment. The control, that's used for comparison. There's no variables whatsoever. And then the next one is the experimental group. And that's the one that will have the variable, the variable that's being tested, and the one that creates the data. Okay. Now your variables come in two flavors, the manipulated or independent variable, and the responding slash dependent variable. Okay. The independent variable or the manipulated uh, variable, this is the one you're actually testing. The uh, independent variable is the if part of your hypothesis, because if I apply this, then something should happen, okay? So this is what's actually being tested. Now the responding variable, that's essentially gonna be the data. This is what you observe once the independent variable is being applied. So this would be the then part of your hypothesis, okay? So it can be observed and measured. So when you see the word observed and measured, you need to think of data. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, now when we talk about your um, uh, responding variable or your dependent variable, we're really talking about data. And so remember, data is just the information that you're going to collect. So it's basically numbers or observations or whatever. Now data comes in three different, I'm sorry, three, comes in two different flavors. And they're right down here. Quantitative and qualitative. Now remember, quantitative is numbers. Think of quantity. And qualitative comes from quality, and that's a description. Okay? So remember we have this table over here. See where we've got numbers? You know, there's a number, there's a number, there's a number. That's quantitative. Here we have descriptions. Okay? That's qualitative. All right? So pretty simple concept, but it's really easy for you to get these confused because they both start with Qs, and the words, you know, they essentially kind of look the same. So make sure that you know the difference between quantitative and qualitative data. All right, uh, difference between a hypothesis and a theory. Um, this one's very, very important. People in the public get this confused all the time. Uh, hypothesis is simply a possible answer. A theory is a hypothesis with lots and lots of evidence. In other words, it's been experimented upon, experimented upon, experimented upon, and it's, you know, we've got a lot of evidence. So a theory is something very powerful. So make sure that you remember that hypothesis, possible answer that can be tested, 
theory hypothesis with tons of evidence. But I do want you to make sure that you remember that you remember this book definition because this is what will probably show up on tests. Well-tested explanation. In other words, hypothesis with a lot of evidence. Characteristics of life. Now remember, our, our way to remember the characteristics of life is Mr. Hugo Re. Mr. Hugo Re. Um, let's go over these in a little bit of detail. All right, remember the N made up of cells. You can either be unicellular. Fact. Or you can be multicellular. Those words are self-explanatory. One-celled organism, many-celled organism, like yourselves. Okay? Reproduce. You're going to reproduce through two different ways. You can either do it asexual. Asexual reproduction uh, does not give you genetic variety. Facts. Sexual reproduction will give you genetic variety. Genetic variety is the raw material for evolution. Okay? Universal genetic code. That would be DNA. And if you remember the central dogma of biology, DNA to RNA to protein. Okay, all living things use that pathway. Growth and development. Grow means you add more cells to each other, uh, to yourselves. Uh, development means that you're going to change form. Okay, uh, obtain and abuse materials and energy. Think of materials as food, and those would be like your carbohydrates, your lipids, etc. And then energy is the ability to do work. And when it comes to biology, let's get that K right, we're talking about Fact. chemical energy. And we're going to get to that stuff in Chapter 2. Respond to stimuli, okay? Uh, a, re, a stimulus is something that causes a response. So if somebody would go, boo, and you would jump back because you're scared, the boo was the stimulus. Your response was, ah, scared, okay? Homeostasis. Maintain a constant internal environment. This is actually vital to all living things. Um, when their homeostasis get out of whack, we essentially just say that they are, um, you know, that they're sick. Okay, and then evolve is change over time. And this would be done through the process of natural selection. So remember, Mr. You Go Re. All right, one more slide. Okay, levels of organization. Now remember, as I told you before, this picture is a little bit more detailed than what's in your book. But remember the highlights? Tissue is a group of cells working together on a common function. And organ is a group of tissues working together on a common function. Um, a population is a group of uh, the same organism in the given area. Think of like in a park, a population of squirrels. The community, think of a park. You got trees, you got squirrels, you got grass, you got hawks, you got uh, chipmunks. That's a community. An ecosystem would be the community plus non living things such as water, soil, weather, etc. And then the biosphere, all the ecosystems on the planet put together, bam, there's your biosphere. Biosphere, uh, all the living things. All the places where life is found on this planet. So, good luck on your celebration of knowledge. And until our next video series, we're going to catch you on the flip side.